Hello, um, my name's Steve. Um, my very good friend Mike Hurst asked me to share some thoughts um, with you all around leadership during lockdown and uh, perhaps what I've learnt um, during this time really. So uh, to give you some context, I work in the leisure industry um, and I've done leadership roles and management roles for 32 years. Yes, I know I don't look old enough, but uh, it's true. Um, and I look after a, a large business of you know 400 plus people. And uh, just been quite a reflective time to think about all of the leadership lessons um, that I've been fortunate enough to learn during my career and life. Um, mostly through chance meetings with um, people who are a lot more smart at leading than me or better than leading than uh, you know I thought I could be but um, certainly through being uh, interested in um, what is the right way and best way to get uh, the most out of people who work for you so and with you so um, I thought I'd sort of start with um, a little story about my granddad, really. So uh, my grandfather was an RSM in the Royal Engineers uh, during the Second World War and was uh, at the Dunkirk landings. And uh, I idolised him as a child and um, he uh, taught me that um, I should always be the best version of myself. And uh, that, that um, sort of mantra of you know, get out of bed and try and be the best version of yourself every day has served me uh, well through my life as uh, a leader and, and as a human being, I guess. So I think, um, you know, my first sort of uh, leadership lesson is always try to genuinely be the best version of yourself. Um, secondly, I would uh, uh, sort of say that one of the other lessons that I was taught um, by my father, really, um, we didn't always see eye to eye and we still don't but um, one of the things he taught me was that um, you know you've got to seek to understand things fully and um, you know nothing comes uh, for nothing you've got to work hard and apply yourself and um, not to um, ignore that and uh, he, I think in his words, it was more a case of, you know, you have to prove yourself. If you, th if you think you're worth anything more, you have to prove yourself. And um, <laughs> I worked for him once when I was very young and um, did a particularly bad job. Uh, he ran an engineering company and um, he, uh, he fired me. Yeah, true story. And um, sent me home and um, he was probably right to fire me. I was moaning about how bad the work was and that, you know, I, I could do better. And I think his sort of parting shot was, you know, if you could think you could do better, you know, go ahead and prove that. And then fired me and uh, subsequently I couldn't pay my mum my uh, the housekeeping money uh, to live at home. And um, he was very frustrated with that. And um, I very quickly learned that, um, you know, you have to uh, make sure in, in life and in leadership that you take responsibility for your actions and not to moan about things, but to find solutions. So uh, that was quite an interesting life lesson. So I think on reflection, I would say that, you know, you, you've got to seek, always seek solutions and um, spend quality time focused on what you can do, not what you can't do, things that were in your influence and sphere of control. And the reason I'm sort of talking about these things, um, you know, bear with me, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, but is that all of these little chance meetings or chance conversations throughout your life, you know, if you wrote them down on a timeline, probably, you know, shape the way you've been nurtured or uh, taught and their key lessons and I think it's been really important for me at this time during lockdown when everybody's nervous and stressed and a bit panicked and worried you know about their job worried about the future worried about health that um, you know uh, we should um, learn the lessons of the past and apply them in the way you lead now 
And um, one of the sort of the next lessons that I, I sort of uh, learned um, was that um, I remember a chap I worked for called uh, Liam Riley, his name was, big Irish guy, quite, quite, quite a hard chap actually. But uh, he said, Steve, he said, if um, you should always ask yourself this question, you know, uh, why should people follow me? Well, you know, what, why do you, you know, you know, do you earn the right to, to ask someone else to do something? And um, he said, to be in control of others and have responsibility, you need to be in control of yourself. And I remember that, like, you know, that's probably 30, 30 years ago, but I probably remember that phrase as clear as day and, you know, reflect on it almost every day, really, that um, it's a great responsibility to lead others um, and be in that position. Um, so take it seriously, you know, it's, it's your profession. And I think, uh, you know, if I was a lawyer or a, <coughs> a policeman or a, a brain surgeon, God forbid, uh, you know, you would have to take your career seriously and... Uh, and um, sort of go to school really and understand what are the key bits that make up a good leader. So from, um, from that takes me on to my, sort of my next reflection really, which is that, um, you know, you can learn to be a good leader. You know, I don't think, um, you know, I don't subscribe to the view that people are born leaders. You know, I was born in a little village in West Wales, did particularly poorly at school, didn't really listen, was a bit, uh, disruptive probably in school and you know was always the guy that was making people laugh for sure and having fun and loving sports and things but uh, I didn't really apply myself to you know uh, being academic but um, sort of quickly learned um, by watching my mother more than anyone really that uh, being in the business of people means that you have to connect with people and that doesn't change um, you know in business and I think it um, doesn't matter what level you're at, if you can connect with people properly and have proper integrity, like my, my mother did with everything that she did, with whether it was being a barmaid in the pub next door, or whether it was running a hairdressing business, or whether it was you know doing the charity work that she did um, for cancer research, that uh, you know, got me to understand that having integrity um, even when you have to deal with a difficult message, if it's presented in the right way, um, you know, it, it can absolutely be understood and, you know, people, people respond well to that. It's sort of, I would want to be treated that way myself. And uh, I think certainly at these times during this pandemic, it's been more relevant than ever to be able to connect with people and, uh, truly seek to understand before you pass a judgment and uh, help, you know, start with a true intent to help people. So then we kind of get on to, you know, uh, from a leadership perspective, I think the things that have seen me right. So there's a couple of couple of authors, I guess, so Ken, Ken Blanchard, the one minute manager, you know, stock book that's probably on the shelf in every, every leader's um, library. Um, you know, some of the lessons from his books around building high performing teams um, have really stood the test of time for me uh, around goal setting, around feedback, around situational leadership and um, having the appropriate leadership style for the, you know, the situation in front of you um, has been really important for me. And uh, again, during this time of pandemic closure, I mean, I've sort of had more time to reflect like everybody else whilst I've worked all the way through it and uh, had to go to work to keep the wheels on the bus, so to speak. Um, you know, and being in a very small team again, actually, sort of a, a COVID team of 10, uh, as opposed to a large team of 400, um, really reminded me of some of these uh, things that have happened to me and perhaps have shaped the leader that I want to be and that I, uh, I, I, I am. And, uh, and <clears throat> I think whilst it would have been very easy in a small team to try and do everything and you know, be the expert again and um, 
all of those things. I think it's been a huge opportunity to continue to lead through others and inspire um, some other people to have a ticket to play and you know learn things that um, are good for them uh, and good for the business. So um, I'm lucky enough to work in a really great business that uh, treat their people very well and give us the freedom to operate as leaders, uh, which you know I, I am very thankful for. But uh, there have been times when I haven't worked in businesses that have had values uh, and beliefs that um, have helped me be the best version of myself, uh, to use my granddad's words, uh, whilst at work. But uh, the business I'm in at present affords me that opportunity. And um, I would say that I think it's still been relevant to set goals, give feedback, to coach, to um, develop others and develop future talent. It's still been relevant to be uh, high challenge, but high support. Um, you know, the situation has demanded that. So certainly there have been times, you know, where I think you, you, you do have to be quite clear about what it is you want, but um, you can do that in a support, supportive uh, way. And, uh, you know, it's sort of my observation that people really appreciate and grow as a result of that. Um, so, and I think uh, the other thing for me that's been very relevant is in the re reflection time um, during COVID and leading is that setting personal goals um, is equally as important as setting professional goals. And um, uh, you might see another little video on the sort of arts channel on here soon of me playing guitar, but... Um, Badly, probably, but <laughs> one of my, my personal goals um, a few years back uh, following my divorce was to pick the guitar up again because I'd played from the age of nine through till about um, the age of um, 30 and gave up for ooh, 18 years. Um, picked it back up again about four years ago and had forgotten how to play it. And um, I had to write some goals about how I was going to do that um, in terms of, um, you know, how to learn the basics uh, and then uh, watch others play and seek to understand the methodology uh, and expand that. Uh, and um, saying that I play now in, a, you know, just for, for fun and do some charity gigs and things, but I play in a, a sort of covers rock band. Um, called Strange Formation and uh, that's been a great release uh, during these stressful times. Music, the arts, dancing, TV, whatever it is you, you like to do. I think it's important in, in uh, your leadership life and personal life to find the time uh, to um, you know, ha have a passion outside of doing a job. Um, yeah, do your job well but don't let it dominate all of your thinking. I think some of my best thinkings come while I'm trying to learn a blues solo in B minor, maybe. Um, so I sort of say my reflections uh, through this time is that uh, I've been lucky enough to work with some great people that have shared their stories with me or some little nuggets or phrases or statements which have triggered me to think about what that means to me. I'd ask us all the same question really is, you know, are you doing that for the next generation? And at the age of 52 now, I spend a lot of time reflecting and thinking about, you know, I've been lucky enough to learn those lessons because I've worked around great people over the years. And actually sometimes I've learned lessons from people that weren't so great in terms of how not to do things, but they're all lessons and they're all relevant. And I, and I think uh, what would be great is if uh, coming out of lockdown, people take the time to reflect on what's happened and uh, continue to story tell and pass on top tips and uh, ways of thinking and um, how to improve yourself because I think everyone's got a story you know you don't you don't have to be lucky you can make your own luck I think that's genuinely um, something that you know all of us can, can can get on with and you know work hard to make our own luck and uh, I think um, really important to help the next generation along and what can we learn from this. So whilst 
the landscape for business is going to be tougher. <coughs> you could turn that into challenging and fun. Yeah, I think um, you can be frugal and need to manage the budgets, but you can have fun being frugal. Uh, uh, you know, it really is sort of how do you change it up and change your thinking to a bit more of a positive slant. So, so look, you know, I, I don't know if any of what I've said is going to be of any help or interest to you, but, um, you know, uh, I hope it is. And if you like, you know, push the like button and I come back and tell you some more rambling stories or maybe play a bit of guitar for you. Uh, but remember, be kind out there, uh, learn the lessons and pass your story on. Have a great day.